Hi, welcome to Cornerstone Virtual Sunday for August 30, 2020. I'm Mike Gillen, pastor of Cornerstone United Methodist Church. To those of you who are new to Cornerstone, welcome and thanks for joining us. Please contact us at cornerstoneoffallon.org, clicking on the Contact Us tab, then filling out the Connect card. We'd love to meet our new guests. To all of you who have Facebook pages, take a minute and click the Share button on our virtual service to share it with your friends. Once you've done that, then click Share Now. I also want to thank all of you who are contributing financially to Cornerstone United Methodist Church. Your support is literally how we are able to continue this ministry that began in 1807. Thanks for your continued financial generosity. It is literally changing lives every day. Our scripture for today will be Ephesians 5, verses 1 and 2, and 8 through 10. Take a moment and find that scripture so we can read it together. I'll be reading from the message translation in case you want to find that particular translation of the Bible. Jesus promises us in Matthew 18, 20, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. Through the Holy Spirit, you and I are literally brought together by this virtual technology. So let's worship together. Find in these moments a place of sanctuary where God creates for you an experience of sacred space and time and confirms that you are with other people of God. Join me in worshiping as we enter this time in prayer. Pray with me. God, help us today to discover your life, to realize that you have been leading us to a spiritual life we desperately need, even if we haven't realized your leadership is there. In these moments today, God, be with us in a way that confirms your love and grace for us and leads us to see how we can live better by faith, claiming an eternal heritage that you're giving to us. In Christ's name, amen. I hope you find during this time of worship, that you can remove the distractions that keep you from hearing God speak to you. Literally take a moment right now and confirm that things that could distract you are not around you. Hear what God has to say for you this day. Let's continue worshiping with our affirmation of faith. We find in the Apostles' Creed a statement of faith that binds us together with Christ's followers throughout history and around the world. Join me in being bound together with one another through our affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I hope you find in that affirmation of faith words of life for you. Our scripture for today is found in Ephesians 5, verses 1 and 2, and 8 through 10. I'll be reading again from the message translation of the Bible. Hear these words of life meant for you and me today. Watch what God does, and then you do it, like children who learn proper behavior from the parents. Mostly what God does is love you. Keep company with God and learn a life of love. Observe now. Observe how Christ loves us. His love was not cautious, but extravagant. He didn't love in order to get something from us, but to give everything of himself to us. Love that way. You groped your way through that murk once, but no longer. You're out in the open now. The bright light of Christ makes your way plain. So no more stumbling around. Get on with it. The good, the right, the true. These are the actions appropriate for daylight hours. Figure out what will please Christ and then do it. 
This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our message series for August is titled Life. Each week in August, we're discovering that God's way leads us to a life illuminated by Christ's image, led by the Holy Spirit, and inspired by the Bible. Today, I'm talking about God with us. God's way focuses on Christ, who becomes the image we seek to see in the mirror more and more each day. When I was a kid, there was a show called The Six Million Dollar Man. It was a show about an astronaut, Steve Austin, who was injured and had to be rebuilt with bionic technology, giving him superhuman strength, amazing running and jumping ability, and he could see for miles. The price tag for rebuilding this man was six million dollars. One of the things I loved about the show was the way they slow motion Steve Austin running. I thought he looked so cool. And they had this great sound effects. I remember going outside and running down the street pretending to be Steve Austin. The sun would be at my back and I'd be able to see the the shadow of me running, and I try to match the image of my mind's eye of Steve Austin running that I would see in slow motion. It was also cool to try and imitate the bionic man. Imitation. Using one's mind's eye to imagine how to act or sound or perform. Taking what someone else has done and transfer their art or voice or ideas onto what we want to do. This is all part of the human effort to figure out who we are and how we want to be. Christian faith is built on the idea that Christ is the ideal image for what it looks like to live faithfully for God. Life with God is apprehended as Christ is seen, understood, and imitated by those who follow him. What are the two or three basic things you believe you should do if you are to successfully imitate Christ? Right now, if you're watching live on Facebook, take a second and type in your answer to this question. If you're watching the recording of this live event, take a moment and pause the recording and write down or type into your phone's notes your answer. Again, the question is, what are the two or three basic things you believe you should do if you are to successfully imitate Christ? The phrase Christian is meant to be a descriptor. It describes what the people who have this faith, who practice this particular religion, are trying to do. The word Christian, in its original form, meant to belong to or be given to Christ. It connoted being a servant of the anointed one. Christian. It's a word that reflects following, adhering to, and being given over to Christ. Christian can also imply a wish to imitate or pattern one's life after Christ, to become, as some used to say, little Christs, as we try to live as Christ lived. So what are those two or three things you think are crucial to you being a a little Christ and successfully imitate Christ? The scripture for today begins to help us answer this question. Again, Ephesians is saying to us this, watch what God does And then you do it, like children who learn proper behavior from their parents. Mostly what God does is love you. What a simple analogy. Watch what God does like a child will watch what a parent does. Does it get more basic for us humans? We grow up imitating what our parents do. We sit like they sit. We stand with one leg on the side like some of them do. We open envelopes in a strange way like one of them do. We get hungry when we don't get lunch soon enough like they do. We grow up imitating the people who have given and sustained our lives. This is what it means to be an imitator of Christ, to watch how God is loving us, especially as we witness it in Jesus Christ. Then we imitate that love. We imagine the sun, S-O-N, shining down on us, causing a shadow to fall in front of us that we can watch. Do we behave like he does? Do we love others as he loves us? The Bible continues to speak to us about imitating the Son. Keep company with him and learn a life of love. Observe how Christ loved us. His love was not cautious, but extravagant. He didn't love in order to get something from us, but to give everything of himself to us. 
love like that, how would you keep company with Christ? He lived 2,000 years ago. Maybe the witness of the Bible can remind you of who Christ is. Perhaps prayer can become a way to commune with Christ day to day, asking the Spirit of God to help you imagine and see the image of Christ when you look in the mirror, even if only a faint reflection of that Christ. Christ loves you extravagantly, not for his own gain or comfort or success, but that you gain new life and find ways to comfort others and discover success in your service to God and others. Can you love like that? Can you imitate Christ's love for you in the ways you love others? What happens when you seek to imitate Christ? What happens is this. You discover God is with you, literally walking with you every day. And you realize that you can see God's work all around you, giving you opportunity and purpose to join God in the work that's going on all around you. There may have been times in your life when you've wondered what your purpose should be. The Bible wants to give you purpose today. Open your hearts and believe what the Bible is saying to you. Again, it says, you groped your way through that murk once, but no longer. You're now out in the open. The bright light of Christ shines on your, pl- your way plainly and makes your way plain for you today. Sometimes you felt like you were sleepwalking through life, didn't you? Or you were walking through life groping to find your way. You don't have to do that anymore. God is shining the light of Christ on you, on your life, illuminating your path. Your life can be inextricably linked to Christ's life, ministry, death, and resurrection. As God loves you through Christ, you now have a new life that enables you to humbly love others and shine the light of Christ in this world. So often we get to, the, to places in life where we feel like we're stumbling along. We can't see where we're going. We don't know what our next step should be. We feel directionless. Today, Ephesians speaks to you and to me and says this, so no more stumbling around. Go, get on with it. The good, the right, the true. These are the actions appropriate for daylight hours. Figure out what it is to please Christ, and then go do it. What will please Christ? What will be pleasing to God? Don't make this more difficult than it needs to be. Figure out one thing you can do today that will reflect the love of God the sacrifice of Christ, the good work of the Spirit. Give up the frustrations you're experiencing as you look around at people who disappoint you. Stop listening to those talking heads on TV that make you angry at the world. Take a deep breath. No, take two deep breaths. Right now with me. Let's do it. Come on. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Allow the Spirit of God to fill you with hope, peace, joy, and love. These are the attributes, the marks of God with us. These mark a life with God. I'm praying for you this week. I'm praying that you can imagine in your mind's eye that you will look like what you'll look like as you live a life God has created for you. It's a life with a humble heart for Christ, a faith that uh, you take ownership of as you ask yourself what is fitting and pleasing to do. It's a devotion a life of devoted service to God and neighbors. Above all, the life God has created for you to live is one of reflecting Christ in what you think, say, and do. God is leading us forward in faith every day. We're created to serve God, follow Christ, and live in the Spirit. Each day is an opportunity to take a step forward in faith, to live better by faith, to grow in love toward God and others. Understand that prayer leads us to this life of living better every day. Faith is our lifeline to God, giving clarity to what God wants for us and explaining how the Bible's teachings can become part of our life every day. As we enter a time of prayer together, talk with God about the next steps forward God wants you to take. Ask for the courage to share those steps with other Christians. And remember that prayer is meant to be not just about our own needs, but about the needs of others. This week, I hope you'll ask uh, for God to be guiding you as you pray. Ask God to help you grow in faith. Seek a humble heart 
as you aim to become more devoted to God and more loving toward neighbors. Find the life God has for you, a life that you can take responsibility for, a life of faith that direct, directly connects you to the ways you, you put yourself in position to experience God's grace. Discover in daily prayer, Bible study, and acts of service, God with you. So take a moment. Let's pray together. Our God, we approach you today with humble hearts, seeking you out and wishing for your grace to become part of our life. God, remind us that your son can show us how to live. Give us the vision and the desire and the will to imitate Christ by humbly seeking your help every day, by offering your help to others, by understanding your spirit is wishing to comfort and lead us in all we say and do. Today, God, remind us that you are walking with us. Now, God, remind us of what it means to be your people. Teach us how to pray as we remember your son's prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It has been great to be with you for this edition of Cornerstone Virtual Sunday. I hope you find God in the everyday rituals of life. And I hope you interrupt the routines of your life for unexpected blessings. Look for a sunrise or sunset that confirms the beauty of God's handiwork. Sit still for a moment and enjoy a cup of coffee or a glass of tea. Listen to the music that fills your heart with joy. Call someone up that you love and just enjoy listening to them talk. Find these everyday interruptions of daily life and allow them to be a blessing, even as you offer a blessing to others. Again, it's been great to worship with you. Hope you find God in every day of this week. Allow me to offer a final blessing as we conclude our worship together. As we leave this time, the grace of God and light of Christ go before us. Be blessed and be a blessing to a world that desperately needs God's saving hope, peace, joy, and love. Amen.